This video explains how to calculate the mean in the Python programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the Python code. In the first example of this video, I will show you how to calculate the mean of a list object. And for this, we first need to create an example list, as you can see in the first code snippet. And in this code snippet, we are creating a list object, which is called my list. And this list contains eight different values. Now, if you want to calculate the mean of this list, we also need to import the NumPy package, as you can see in the second code snippet. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the mean function of the NumPy package, as you can see in the next code snippet. So in this case, we are applying the mean function of the NumPy package to our list object, my list, and we are printing the output of this below. So as you can see, the mean value of our list object is 3.125. So in this first example, I have explained how to calculate the mean value of a list object. However, it's also possible to calculate the mean of data frame columns. And this is what I want to show you in the next examples, starting in the next code snippet. So in this code snippet, I'm first creating some example data frame. And for this, we first need to import the pandas library, as you can see at the beginning of this code. And then in the next step, I'm using the data frame constructor of the pandas library to create some example data. And I'm printing this data frame below. So as you can see, after running these lines of code, we have created a new data frame, which contains nine rows and three different columns, which are called x1, x2, and group. And the first two columns, x1 and x2, contain numeric values. In the next step, we can calculate the mean value of only one column, as you can see in the fifth code snippet. And in this case, I'm using the mean function of the pandas library. And I'm applying this function only to the very first column of our data frame, the column x1. So as you can see, based on the output of this code snippet, the mean value of the data frame column x1 is 5.33. We can also print the mean values of all numeric columns in our data frame, as you can see in the next line of code. So in this case, I'm applying the mean function to the entire data frame. And within the mean function, I'm also specifying that I want to calculate the mean value only for numeric columns. So in this case, the numeric columns in our data frame are the columns x1 and x2. And as we already know, the mean value of the column x1 is 5.33 and the mean value of the column x2 is 4.0. In the next step, it's also possible to calculate the mean value by row. And this is what we are doing in the seventh code snippet. So in this line of code, we are once again using the mean function. We are specifying that we want to consider only the numeric columns. And we are also specifying the axis argument to be equal to one to tell the Python programming language that we want to calculate the mean by row. So if you run this line of code, another output is returned. And as you can see, this output shows the mean value for all the columns that are numeric in our data frame by row. It is also possible to calculate the mean value by groups. So as you might already have noticed, we also have one grouping column in our data frame. And in the last code snippet, we are using this grouping column to group our data into different groups A, B, and C. And we are doing that by using the group by function. And within this function, we are specifying the group column of our data. And then we are applying the mean function to calculate the mean for each of the columns in our data frame by group. So the output below shows the mean value for each of the groups and for each of the two numeric columns. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video, so you can find it there. If you have liked this video, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. 
Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.